In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to duplicate and instance objects. The first part of that is pretty straightforward. Just go to the object menu with any object selected and choose duplicate objects, or use the hotkey shift D. Now, when you do that, you'll notice that your mouse has changed to four little arrows and your status bar along the bottom has a bunch of extra commands. And that's because this is really a duplicate and move. So it's jumped you straight into a move mode. And when you move your mouse, the duplicated object will be moved around with it. To confirm, either hit enter or just left click. Often though, we'll want to move our new object more precisely or maybe not move it at all. If that's the case, let's just select our object and then go to object and duplicate objects. From now on, I'll just use the hotkey shift D. And then as we move our mouse around, just like in any other move mode, we can still constrain to an axis. So I can hit Y on the keyboard to constrain to the Y axis, X for the X axis, or Z for the Z axis. I can also jump straight into any of the other transformations by hitting S for scale or R for rotate. Again, left click or enter to confirm. If you don't want to move it at all, then after you duplicate something, in this case, I'll hit Shift D, you can either right click or hit escape. That looks like it canceled the duplication, but if you look in the outliner, you'll see that we have cube and cube.001. So they're both still there, just lying directly on top of each other. This is often a common point of confusion for new users because commands that jump you straight into a move mode, when you cancel it with the escape button, it doesn't cancel the entire thing, it just cancels the movement of it. The duplicate is still there, and we can see this if we hit G and move it off to the side. Now, when you duplicate something, it creates a full independent copy. Notice that in the outliner, we have cube and cube.001, and the mesh data in the first one is named cube, and the mesh data in the second is named cube.001. So the mesh data is separate, and if I hit tab to go into edit mode on this second one, I can manipulate these vertices and it won't affect the other. However, if I delete that and instead take our cube here and then go to object and duplicate linked, or use the hotkey alt D, that appears to do the same thing, and I now have a new object called cube.001. But if I expand that, notice how the mesh data is also called cube. It's the same data that's in the cube object as well. So if I were to hit tab to go into edit mode and edit one of these vertices, it'll edit that for all objects that share the same mesh data. So this object isn't just a duplicate, it's an instance. What's cool about this is that even though the two objects share the same mesh data, they can have two completely different object properties. So for example, the second one, I can move it off to the side and of course rotate it however I want, but I can also really stretch it along the Z axis or scale it up to be really, really big, all while still keeping that link between the two meshes. They both have the same mesh data. It's just that this one is really, really stretched thanks to its object properties. If you ever want to unlink something and stop it from sharing the same mesh data, then all you need to do is click on the green triangle icon next to the mesh data in the outliner, which jumps you to the mesh data properties over in the properties editor. Here at the top, we can see that this object is using the mesh data called cube, and to the right of it, it has this little two icon. That means that there are two objects that are using the same mesh data. If I were to take this object and Alt D to create another linked duplicate, and Alt D again, now that number is four because we have four objects sharing that same mesh data. To make it an independent copy again, go ahead and just click the four or whatever number it is, and that'll make it unique. Now I can hit tab to go into edit mode, edit this however I want, and it won't affect the others. But the rest of these are still linked, again, until I hit that number icon. Now, if you're just getting into 3D, you probably won't need to use instancing right away, but it is good to know that it exists. This works the same with non-mesh objects as well. If I were to select my camera and hit Shift D to create a duplicate of this camera, then I can change the camera properties without affecting the original. If I were to take the camera though and hit Alt D to create a linked duplicate, then the camera properties will share the same name and changing the settings for one, we'll change it for the other as well. You can also use the duplicate command in edit mode. So I'll take my cube here, hit tab to go into edit mode, and we can duplicate vertices, again with Shift D, or go to the mesh menu and duplicate. We can also duplicate edges by selecting either two vertices that are connected or going into edge select mode and hitting shift D to duplicate an edge, or we can duplicate faces. Again, shift D. This is going to be one of the most common commands you'll use, so I would recommend taking some time and getting used to the hotkey.